Hi, I'm Katherine Zoller. I'm a knitwear designer and I sell my patterns on Ravelry at knitwiz.com and on my website sweetmeadowknits.com. I also carry yarns and kits for the patterns that I create. Today I'll be talking about this sweater. It's Cloisters and it's one of my most recent designs and Specifically, I'll be talking about how to create the collar and knit the lace, which is knit top down. The entire sweater construction is knit top down. It's seamless and it has lace panels on the sleeves and at the hemline as well. The shoulder construction are set in sleeve construction and you'll see a picture of me wearing the sweater in a little bit. It has about, my sweater has about five inches of ease. I sell both sized patterns and custom patterns um, where you can input your measurements into KnitWiz and then get generated personalized instructions. And one of the things I like about that is you can actually change the amount of ease. So if you like less ease, if you're a smaller person, um, less ease is usually a little better because our, our eyes have this illus illusion thing where um, small people look better with lessy it looks the same even though if you're a large person like i am and you have more ease for some reason our I, our eyes interpret it differently so that it looks the same across the sizes um so anyway and i digressed so let me talk to you about the lace i'm going to switch to the camera now and we'll go from there the lace in the cloisters pattern is a multiple of 10 stitches worked in the round. To begin the collar, pick up and purl around with the private or wrong side facing, so that when the collar is folded over, the private side becomes the public side. Match the collar stitch pattern to the neckline by counting back from the beginning of the center front bind off to figure out which stitch to begin with. You may need to increase and or decrease a few stitches along the sides of the neckline to keep in pattern between the front and the back. Then work in P3 K7 ribbing, which is the reverse of the main pattern, for about two inches. One tip is to use one size smaller needle for these rows, then switch back to your larger needle and work in K3 P7 ribbing for a few rows before beginning the lace pattern. The collar will fold over naturally at this point. This is the Cloister's lace chart. To balance the stitch pattern horizontally, both the knit 3 P7 rib and the lace patterns begin with the second knit stitch rather than the first. When you reach the lace section at the hemline and cuffs, your BOR marker will be correctly positioned so that the ribbing flows into the lace. So the yarn I'm using for this demo is the same yarn I used in the Cloisters sample sweater. It is um, Aranmore Light by the Fiber Company. Um, it's a DK weight and it's a little bit thick thin. You can sort of see that here. But once you've blocked it, it blooms nicely and fills in spaces, so you don't want to knit it too tightly. As an aside, I'm also using the same yarn for the project I have on my needles right now. It's a sweater for my husband and it's full of all over cables. Uh, use the exact same yarn, different colorway, and you can see how it makes the cables pop. It hasn't been blocked yet, um, but when I do block it, I probably will leave it as 3D as possible. Okay, here I am ready to start the lace. Um, I've got my BOR marker at the second stitch of the knit section, and I'm gonna go ahead and work in pattern. Now this, this I'm gonna work on the bobble. Um, the first round of the lace chart shows the exact same stitch as the uh, Pearl 7 Knit 3 ribbing. So I'm gonna skip to the second round and you work the bobble on the fourth stitch of the of the purl section. And it's pretty simple, you just knit into the stitch, bring the yarn forward, purl into the stitch, 
bring the yarn back, knit into the stitch, and bring the yarn forward, purl into the stitch, and then one more knit, slip it off, and bring each of the pass each of the worked stitches over the last stitch on the right hand needle until you have a little bobble. This is the last one, and there it is, little bobble. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work this round and work to the point where I get the lace and, uh, going with the yarn overs, and then I'll be right back. I'm now on the fourth round of the Cloister's Lace Chart. I've knit the first four stitches, and I'm ready to work a center double decrease, which involves the stitch just above the bobble. That's the second stitch, and that's the one that will be centered, and um, the stitches on either side of it. So in order to work this, it's a, called an S2KP2, which means after I've yarned o yarn over, you don't want to forget to yarn over, um, I slip two together knitwise from the left to the right needle. Then I knit the next stitch. And then I go ahead and pass the two stitches that I've slipped previously back over. And you can see the center stitch is in the middle. And that's because when you slip the two stitches knitwise, you're reversing the positions on, on the right-hand needle. And that's all there is to it. And then I do another yarn over, and they're very easy to check and see if you've done your yarn overs. I usually just go back through and look to make sure I didn't forget one um, as, I, as I'm working the round. And then I just go ahead and knit to the next bobble. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to, the next bobble is at the second position. So I go ahead and yarn over, <laughs> slip the two stitches, knit the next stitch, pass the two slipped stitches back over, and there we have it, a center double decrease. Round five was just a knit row, so I went ahead and knit round five, and now I'm ready to work round six. Round six shows that you knit three stitches, which I've done, and then you have a right-leaning decrease. Uh, knit two, and so that's a knit two together, so I'm going to go ahead and knit two together. Oh, but before I knit two together, I yarn over, and then I knit two together, and then I knit one, then I SSK. and then I yarn over. And then that's all there is to it. And then I work to the next repeat. So here I can look at my work and I can see that I had a yarn over. So that's the center stitch. So that'll be my knit. And this, these two will be my um, knit two together. So I'm ready to yarn over. And that way I don't always have to count. But if I did count, it would be six, five stitches between. Okay, so yarn over, knit two together, knit one, SSK. and yarn over, knit five, yarn over, knit two together, you slip the stitch under the two, next two stitches on the left needle, and knit those together like that. Knit one, with an SSK, you're slipping 
two stitches singly. So slip, slip, and then I, you could slip them back to the left needle like this and knit them together like this. Or you can leave them on the right hand needle and just take your left needle through the front like this and knit them off, which is more efficient. And that's a left leaning. You can see the leg right there leaning to the left. Yarn over.